So the ladies that were sitting on this shelf here are now inside. I've been moving them in and out, in and out for the last three weeks, and I have decided today is the day that they're going to stay inside. The only one I am going to leave outside is my Cymbidium. It is still doing well. The temperatures are still pretty good for it. So that one will stay outside. So let's go inside and look at how the girls who used to live on that shelf look at the moment. So let's start with our Horace Maxima here. And she did not really suffer too much as far as um, any sun damage or anything like that. She's got a little bit of leaf dieback right here where she got a little bit of sunburn. But other than that, she her leaves look really, really well. And the growth that she started on at the beginning is maturing nicely. There's no damage on it. And this new growth right here that she had at the beginning and didn't do anything, just recently started to swell up a little bit. And then as you can see, it looks like there's another eye, if it'll focus, another eye right there getting ready to swell, I hope as well. So we may end up with two directions of growth on that one. And then we have the uh, Copper Queen, who finished these two growths right here. And then this one right here is maturing, getting ready to work on its second leaves. And then this one here, just recently, about three weeks ago, decided to start really taking off. Just kind of sat there for the entire growing season. And then that one there, I believe, whoops, sorry. That one there got eaten off by Mr. Grasshopper. I'm going to have to figure out next year what to do about him. Well, I'm sure there's more than one of him, but while we we're talking about Mr. Grasshopper, uh, my Cucolata here had a beautiful new growth on it. He decided he was going to munch it off, and now we have another new growth. So that is a good thing. And I'm thinking, again, with all of them, because we are going to be turning our heater on in the next month or so, with that warm temperature, they should all take off. Not really going to look at Miss Pearl Cooper because we just looked at her in the Brookside update, but that one leaf is just really taken off. She's doing really well. Now let's look at our beautiful pink doll here. So there's two pieces. This piece right here is not quite as strong as this one, I don't believe, because this growth and this growth both started at the same time. And as you can see, this one is far, far away from where this one is. So I'm hoping that this one will mature up and then fill in some more roots for her. And then we have Elaine Taylor here that, that's the front of the plant. Let's look at the back of the plant. And in, in some of them, you can see how light their leaves are. That's just from all the bright sun. I'm wondering if that's gonna darken back up or if that's permanent damage. So that'll be something I watch during the winter as well. But these two growths right here, let me just turn her around a little bit. She has two directions of growth. You can see a beautiful root right there going down into a la pot. So she is, I bought her in bloom. Wait a minute, is this Elaine Taylor? I did not buy her in bloom. I apologize, I lied. I'm hoping to see one of these two bloom. And then we have, my Naomi Stilette that grew the one growth this season that is not much to talk about. She's a lot smaller than the previous growth that she came with because when I got her, this one had just started. Um, so once, well, I guess she did both. She finished this one and then grew this one, but not, it's still not anything to talk about. The good thing is that she does have some lovely roots going down into the pot now that she settled back in because she's the one that got knocked over by the heavy winds that we had and I had to repot her. Hoping this is not too big of a pot. I, only, I, I am very careful when I water this one because it is in small bark and then it's a large pot. But the clay does help kind of pull some of the extra moisture out. And then my Sagreek wax ball here. I think she's over potted. Um, normally I say pot size doesn't matter, but she just, she looks ridiculous in this pot. So once this growth here starts shooting out some new roots, I am going to put her into a smaller pot just to kind of help 
well, one, for space, and two, just, she, she doesn't look so weird. She just looks weird to me, and it's, sometimes it's about the aesthetics of things, and I know there's going to be people that say I shouldn't be repotting, but as an orchid grower, you kind of do what you feel like works for you. Now, this one here is the one with the ginormous name, is RLC Chia Lin Golden Super crossed with RLC Hilo Grand. And this one has the most uh, sun damage on it. Let's just come around here real quick. As you can see, look at all that. I mean, that poor leaf right there just really got eaten up by the sun. And then you can see a little bit of damage here. And then this one here, nice sun damage there. And then right in here. But the new growth, look at it. I hate that it's growing out of the pot like this, but what do you do? Yeah, I didn't catch it in time, but look here, guys. She's got, she's got a sheath. Now, whether this blooms or not, because this is the first sheath that she has created, will yet to be seen, but the fact that she's creating a sheath means she's close to getting some blooms, and we'll be able to see what she looks like, because quite frankly, I've forgotten, because I bought her simply off of the picture. And I don't want to go online and look. I want to be surprised. So from there, it's a waiting game. Last night, I was I had to bring them in because we had a really bad rainstorm. And they were getting really, really, really wet. It was cold rain. It was about 70 degrees. I was like, let me bring them in. So I brought them in. I was wiping off all the excess water. And I heard, Pow! and I thought I had broken this new growth. But instead, the leaf just kind of popped itself open. And that's when I saw this. So let me know in the comments below if that is what I think it is. And the reason I'm saying it's a sheath one, it doesn't look like a leaf growth or what I'm used to seeing, as well as all of her other growths have all been monofoliate. So she does not have any bifoliates that she's grown. And I've had her since 2020. Uh, she was near blooming size at the time. So two years later, maybe she might bloom. But if not, at least the next one can possibly bloom. The bad thing is, because this growth has come out of the pot, yes, I said that through clenched teeth, I may have to pot her into another pot. So I may disrupt her again and have to wait another two years. But I will be sure to put her into a pot that I'm not going to have to disrupt her again. Had I caught this growth prior to just coming out of the pot, I would have strapped it under here. That's what this strap was originally put here for, was for that growth to catch up to it so it would grow more upright. And this is what happens when you don't pay attention. You get wanky growth. All right, well, let me know what you think about the ladies so far. And then once I figure out where I'm gonna put them, because some of them will be going onto the grow shelves, tables, the shelf that's outside right now, I'm going to move this bookshelf over, put it in that corner, figure out what to do with that mother-in-law's tongue, and put that shelf there so I'll have that for any overflow. Because uh, I know the three big girls are going to be on this shelf, so I'll have to make room for them. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Don't forget to go to the Orchid Supply Store, our sponsor here. And with your coupon code TRISH, T-R-I-S-H, get your 12% off. And remember, shipping is free unless you're shipping international. And then they, they use the USPS rates. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day.